Hello, I'm Adrian and it's been a while since I've looked at anything rock and roll or rockabilly and I thought that today I would look at a real classic of that genre. This is the song Lonesome Train on a Lonesome Track by Johnny Burnett and the Rock and Roll Trio. It's a really good fun song to play, chock full of great rockabilly and rock and roll licks and vocabulary. You can choose to learn the entire song note for note or you could just cherry pick your favourite bits and just learn a few classic rockabilly licks. Guitar on this song, I believe played by a man called Grady Martin, who was a great Nashville session player. Though there's, that seems to be a little bit of debate over who exactly played what on the Rock and Roll Trio album, because there was another guitar player, Paul Burleson, involved, and he played on some of the tracks. Grady Martin came in and played on some of the others. It seems to me that this one is almost certainly Grady Martin's style. I think Paul Burleson had a much more raw and, in a way, messier kind of style, which was equally good but very very distinctive you can hear that on songs like train kept a rolling which i may well look at in another video but today i'm going to focus on lonesome train on a lonesome track as usual i'm going to take you through the entire song i'm going to focus in particular on that classic intro lick and then the solo but i'll also talk you through what i think is going on in the verses as well so let's get to it we are in the key of g for this song and chord wise it's very simple indeed we've just got two chords G and D, which is the one chord and the five chord in that key. And it's a 16 bar form. So we have six bars of G followed by two bars of D. Then we've got five more bars of G, one bar of D and two bars of G to finish off. So in that sense, it's a pretty straightforward tune. The lead guitar part is slightly more complex, but it's all based around a scale that we all know and love. It's G minor pentatonic position one in, at the third fret. <laughs> I think it'd be a really good idea if you think about that scale and use it as a kind of framework when you're learning this song. There are other notes used and in fact it's a really good example of the way that you can take a simple scale that you already know and just add in some extra notes, some chromatics, some colour tones, some chord tones and just make that basic scale sound a bit more exciting and sophisticated. I want to kick off then with that opening riff, it goes like this. <laughs> What a great twangy riff that one is. It starts here at the, the D note here, fifth fret on the A string. Just walks up the major scale really. We've got D and then over onto the D string, E, F sharp, G. Uh, we're coming in on beat two, so it's two, three, four, one, two, three. And then we've got this descending idea. So starting at this G note here, going down one fret at a time, so fifth fret, fourth, third, second, double picking each of these notes. And then we're going over onto the A string, fifth fret, third, first, open A, and then landing on that low G. doing is just adding in a little bit of phrasing with some slides and I think there's a pull off in there as well just help make the whole thing sound a bit smoother so I think I'm probably going slide slide again pull off there see my picking hand here but what I'm doing for most of this lead guitar part is uh, I'm down up picking and I'm trying to keep my pick going with the beat of the song so I'm usually going to be picking down on the down beats in the song and up on the up beats we've got this kind of shuffle rhythm so it's that down up down up of the pick and, and that's exactly what I'm doing with this with this opening riff <laughs> Things are complicated a little bit if you've got a slide or a pull off because then you're you're missing one of those down or up strokes of the pick. But just just try and keep feeling the beat with your picking hand, and that's just 
the way that you're going to get the best kind of groove and sound with a song like this, I think. Okay, I think I want to move on to the solo now. That's going to be the main focus of this lesson. I am going to talk briefly about the verses as well, but I think the solo is probably more interesting and more worth spending time with today. So uh, the, the solo kind of kicks off um, you know, a couple of bars b before the downbeat of the solo proper. We just got a little lead into it, which goes like this, two, three, four, one. <laughs> And all of that is mainly just on one note, this G note, third fret on the top string. We've got one, two, three, four, one. And then we have hammer on and a pull off, three to six on the top string. And then we're playing the sixth fret on the beat. This is all straight out of the minor pentatonic scale. And then Johnny Burnett unleashes this scream and we're into the solo proper and the, the first lick goes like this. We've got... Again, all mainly on one note here, this G, and it's just a good example of how much mileage you can get out of just playing one note if you play it with commitment and play it in an interesting rhythm. So we're just going one, two, and three, four, one, two, and it's all a G note. It just seems to me that one of those is, is a slightly different tone. So that's possibly played at the eighth fret on the B string there instead of at the third fret on the top string. So that, that's the way I'm doing it. Then we've got six to three on the top string and then five on the B string. And this, this fifth fret note on the B string, this is one of those additions to the minor pentatonic scale, which often works really well. This is actually the, the sixth of the, the G major scale or the 13th um, if you want to call it that and it's a really good colour tone to add in to the basic minor pentatonic scale. So that's what's happening there. And the solo continues with this lick. This is kind of the, the blue scale I think in this, uh, in this particular lick. We've got this same hammer on and, and pull off move. And uh, that's three to six, hammer on and pull off on the top string. Six to three on the B string. And then this is the, the flat fifth, that blue scale note, sixth fret sliding down to the fifth fret on the G string. Third fret, and then resolving to the fifth fret on the D. Uh, then we're going up again, so just from the 3rd fret on the G, straight up the blues scale really. And you're giving that top note just a little bit of a push sharp. Down the scale again. And then we hit this really classic rockabilly lick, the one that goes like this. And I uh, love this lick. It's very simple to play, really. It's just pulling off from six to three on the uh, top string and then pulling off again to the open string. And then we're just doing the same thing on the B string. So we have this kind of rolling triplet lick. And I think we do that um, three times and then the solo continues with this. So we've got more of that added fifth fret note on the B string there, that, uh, that sixth up to the flat seven. So we're going five sliding to six and then three. And then we repeat that. And then one more time, then climbing up 3-5 on the B, 3-5-3 three, three on the top string. And I'm hearing a little muted indistinct note there. And then the sixth fret on the top string twice. 
So all of that lick is... Uh, Next phrase. Okay, really simple, but just played with such kind of good time and commitment that it, it sounds great. We've just got two notes here, just uh, G and the, the B flat on the top string, and we're just going like that. And then we have Nice descending phrase, mainly just coming down the, the blue scale, I think. We've got, we've got that one extra note there at the fifth fret on the top string, that's the ninth. And then on down the scale, slide from six to five, and then G, G, F, D. We're nearly there now. We've got um, one, two, three. So nice lick this one. We're going three to five on the D and then three on the G. And then a little chromatic idea. So fourth fret, fifth, sixth, and then three on the B. So it's one, two, three. One, two. And then we have uh, D, C, D. That same little slide from the, the flat fifth down to the fourth and down to G. fall into the main riff of the song one more time. So that's the solo. I'll do what I usually do. I'll just play you through the whole thing, play, play the whole thing through for you slowly so you can hear how it all fits together. If you want to, you could play along with me as well just to try and get the timing. So, uh, so here we go. One, two, three, four, one. briefly going to take you through what's going on in the verses to this song. To be honest, it's a little bit indistinct on the recording because the lead guitar is mixed quite low, so you can't always hear exactly what's happening at all times. So a little bit of guesswork is involved here. And I think the, the part is a bit looser than the, the solo and the intro to this song. It's really just some improvised phrases in, in and around the vocal lines, but uh, w worth checking out. I'll, I'll take you through what I think is going on, but ha have a listen yourself and see what you think. So the, the first verse starts with that main riff. And there's just a little variation on it there. Uh, just going up to the B there. Uh, there's quite a lot of this kind of thing happening. So unison stuff. We're sliding up to the D note on the A string and then playing the open D string. And we've also got quite a lot of this going on. So bending at the fourth fret on the A string up to a D and again having the open D string ringing out and you get that quite nice dissonant sound. And then we've got 
lots of nice little single note kind of fills. We've uh, the first one I think is something like this. We've got one. <laughs> more of this stuff so those are the some of the things that are going on in the first verse the, the second verse gets a little bit busier we've it kicks off with something like this two three four one just based around you know, similar materials to the solo they're just kind of coming down that uh, kind of blues scale uh... um... sliding up to the D there as well more of this stuff phrase goes like this one two and then end of the second verse something like that so sorry this is all a little bit a little bit vague I'm just trying to read this here because I haven't actually learned this this part of the the song properly but that that should give you a rough idea of, of what's going on in this section of the song I, I will write all of this stuff out in music and tab as well if you really want to want to get into the, uh, the the real detail of this song finally then I will just show you the ending lick which I think is really nice that goes like this <laughs> starts with that same slide we've had before from five to six on the G string up to the D and then down the blues scale and then five to three on the D string again and then a little triplet which is four sliding to five on the A followed by the open D string five to three on the A a little bend at five on the low E string and then into our the, the main riff I suppose so two three four and ending with this classic rock and roll called a G6 which is uh, in, in terms of fret numbers, it's three on the low E string, then five, three, four, five on the B string, and then three on the top string. So it's, it's like a, a G7 chord, but you're adding in that sixth there at the fifth fret on the B string. It's a great ending chord, that one. Let me just give you a quick rundown of the gear I'm using to make this video. Guitar-wise, it's my Telecaster, which is a 52 reissue. And I recently actually did a complete video where I look at this guitar in a bit more detail. So if you're interested, you might like to check that out. From there, I'm going into my pedal board. Not really using much in the way of pedals today. Just a touch of overdrive from my J Rocket Archer pedal. From there, I'm going into perhaps the most interesting piece of gear I'm using today. This is my 1980s Roland Space Echo. Now this is a genuine analog tape echo using that to get that nice rockabilly slapback sound. I'm not actually convinced that there's any slapback sound on the original recording to this song but uh, I was just looking for an excuse to get this thing out and use it and it does sound fantastic. And from there I'm just going into my little 1980s Fender Super Champ amp. That is it for today. I really hope you enjoy learning to play this song or bits of this song. As I said, you've got the option to learn the entire thing note for note if you want to, or equally valuable and far less time consuming would be just to go through it and choose one or two of your favorite licks and learn those as well. I have meticulously written out the music and tab for the entire song. So if I'm feeling generous, I will put that up on my website for 
all to enjoy. Uh, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to this channel and uh, maybe check out my Patreon page as well, which I've recently set up. And that's just a way that you'll be able to uh, help me out and support me and enable me to uh, continue doing what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm boring myself a little bit with all this stuff now. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.